this mic on, thank you. All right, come on in. Those who are here for the, um, the congregational meeting, just as a reminder, we've got people here and we've got people at uh, Christ Concord. Hey, Tenny. And we have people on Zoom as well. Uh, perhaps in the back there, um, people will continue to talk. They can shut the doors back there so that we can uh, have less distractions. Thanks, Eric, for taking care of that. Just as a reminder, everybody is certainly welcome listening in and hearing what the plans are and such. When it comes time for voting, however, um, you actually have to officially be on our rolls, not just in your heart, <laughs> but uh, on the rolls too. So if you're a member of the, of the congregation, confirmed or older, that's, uh, that's when you can actually vote. So I'd like to, uh, it's 1218, ready to go? All right, I'd like to introduce our congregational president, Amy Cohen, to here to lead the meeting for today. Good afternoon, everyone. Great to see you all. Um, what an exciting day for our church. We're excited for this meeting and um, appreciate everybody being here in person as well as on our Zoom call. Just going to get a thumbs up that we've got Zoom up and running. We're good? All right. Fantastic. Well, on behalf of the church council, I now call this meeting to order. Pastor Matt, if you could open us in prayer. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for today. We give you thanks that we are in a place that we can even have this conversation. What a blessing it is to be here, to serve you here. God, we ask that you would speak to us and through us today as we discern your will and your mission this Pentecost Sunday. Lord, may your gospel spread like wildfire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Matt. Um, and as, as Pastor Scott mentioned, we're gathered here today as a congregation um, with one agenda, one agenda item, excuse me, and that is to review and discuss and vote on the building project for our church at our South property. Um, I encourage you to take a look. We're going to be showing some pictures, um, some aerial views of uh, what our land in South Charlotte, technically Weddington, looks like. Pastor Matt um, and Lane will go through our design today. So we're very excited about this meeting. We also have three gatherings of people right now. We have those who are here in person um, at Christ Providence. We also have Pastor Tenney leading our folks at Christ Concord. And then those of you who have joined us on Zoom. Um, for those on Zoom, you'll notice there is a chat feature. Um, if you have a question at any time, we've got Alexis that is monitoring that Zoom, and she will give me a heads up that we need to interrupt. Um, she starts jumping up and down. That's probably because I'm not paying attention. So, But please do put your questions in that chat, and when we get to um, the vote, uh, we'll go over again the instructions for you at that time. Fantastic. So, Pastor Scott, if you want to lead us and kind of go over our vision steps to date. Well, very quickly, I just wanted to get us up to speed how we got to this point. Um, about five or six years ago, the church council and the congregation approved the vision of having multiple sites. And, um, and with that vision, it caught nobody by surprise that uh, we needed to have a pastor for that campus. And so then when we called pastor Matt to be a pastor of Christ Lutheran and really gave him the task of developing that campus, it really came as no surprise that eventually we're going to need some land. And then a couple of years ago, when our church voted to go forward to buy that piece of property in Weddington, and by the way, good timing, church, it could have been now with three times, four times the price, good timing, church. So we bought that uh, about maybe three years ago, three years ago. And when we bought that land, it certainly should not come to anybody's surprise that eventually we would like to build on that land. And for the past uh, you know, year and a half during COVID, 
Christ South has been homeless. It's been a homeless campus. We have, uh, we, we were originally meeting at Polar Ridge Elementary School, if you remember that, and then CMS kicked out everybody from there. And so um, tried to go in a neighboring church for a while that had limited success. Beginning in like a week or two, we're gonna have outdoor worship on that South land throughout the summertime. So it, um, a building should not come as a surprise. We've got a homeless campless campus that we do eventually need to be able to provide for that. So now we're at that point, I believe, in that succession, even if this were just a regular mission start from the ELCA, we are about the point five or six years in which they start looking at land and start looking at buildings. In other words, I believe that we're right on track. We haven't rushed it, we haven't delayed it. I believe we're right on track for today, this next move. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Scott. Are there any questions before we move forward? Right. I'd like to welcome um, Pastor Matt up to the stage or to wherever you want to stand. Well, normally, you know, I got to move, but I got to set up shop today because there's a, a heavy amount of emotion as I stand here and see uh, so many amazing people that have joined us here and so many that have joined us online. It is just um, overwhelming. I remember when I first got here, I got to meet somebody that you all know and you remember well. His name is Ben Jones, sat right, right up there. And uh, he was just an amazing man. And when I met him, I was sort of intimidated by him, right? Because he's an older fellow in the congregation. And I thought, well, you know, I've got to make sure I got my ducks in a row, look sharp and do all my stuff. And the first thing I met when I met him, he said, uh, so you're a Tennessee Vols fan. And I'm like, yeah, he goes, so am I. You must be a good pastor. I remember one of the first weeks that I was here, uh, Ben uh, motioned me over. And anytime Ben motions you over, you know, there's something that might be up. And then he motions me over and he says, I want to tell you two things. And I'll never forget this church. So I want to tell you two things. First thing is, I love you. <clears throat> and it just set the tone for the type of ministry that we were going to get to have here. It wasn't just, a, I appreciate you being here and you're going to do some neat things. Go on, Pastor. It was, I love you. And that's what it means to be a part of Christ Lutheran Church. That there is a love and a bond and a family that's deeper than anything I've ever seen anywhere before. And the second thing he said to me, which first of all, the I love you sort of took me off my game for a couple of reasons. I'm like, I barely know you. What is this all about? And he said, I need to tell you something else. <clears throat> I'm probably not ever going to come out of that church of yours down south. And you need to know that. <clears throat> but it's not for lack of support said, I want you to know that this is one of the most important things that we can do as a church, and I'll do everything in my power to help make it happen. So you let me know what you need. We've got to do this for God's mission. Years passed, and I start thinking about all that God has done. I start thinking about 3,000 people that came to an Easter egg hunt and blew our minds when we thought we might have about 500 I think about the moment when our men's group, Southman, got a chance to be a part of somebody's life and literally save it one weekday afternoon. I think about the South Sisters and all the incredible work that they've done, benevolence in our community, lifting up and taking care of so many people beyond. I think about Thrive, Thrive, our day school and our home school, who has kids that came in and church, they were nonverbal, which means they could not speak. And at graduation this past week, when I stood here, I heard them speak. Jesus, miracles, voice coming from these kids. I think of families baptized. I think of the faith life that has been developed in so many and rejuvenated in so many others. Countless people have said to me, Pastor Matt, I've never been able to find a church that speaks my language. But when I walked into that gym, and you all said, welcome home, I felt like I was finally home. God has been at work on our South Campus for a long time, church, amen? And this is our opportunity to blow the gates wide open, to see what God can do yet again. God has always been at work, and it might feel a little bit crazy right now in this post-COVID world, 
but God will always be at work through us. And in the words of Ben Jones, we've got to do this for God's mission. Amen? Amen. Lane, love to have you come up. You've gotten a chance to sort of see a little bit about what our land looks like. We got some really beautiful drone footage uh, that was actually just put up. And as a matter of fact, uh, you can even see the garden ministry that got moved out there. Thank you, David and Walt and the whole crew that came out to move the garden ministry to the Southland. It's absolutely beautiful, stunning, and excited. I'm going to step off to the side, and Lane is going to tell you a little bit about the building that we're proposing to build. And you're going to check me on some of these uh, facts too, man. So, I'm going to be right here. <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. Um, see a lot of familiar faces, and it's great to be up here this morning. I got to say a few things because the wind is upon me, and I got to say these things before I get to the building itself. You know, our family, the Good family, is is really uh, a part of all three campuses. We feel that way. We came here about ten years ago. Thank you, Monty family, for bringing us here. Um, you know, we worshiped here and, and, and we, we served meals for Room in the Inn and set up beds here for Room in the Inn. And we, we love that. We worship at South for the last two years. So we feel a part of that campus. And Tinny, I will be in Concord next Sunday. I can tell you that, right? Um, so we really are. Our family is a part of, of our church, right? The Christ lives in this. That's really what this is all about. And as a member of council, we, we this year we, we came together and centered on all members of all campuses centered on a mission and a vision. And the vision was engaging people to experience Jesus. And our mission were, were three key tenets, find community, build faith, and reach beyond. And I truly believe that what we're doing down at South on Old Dairy Farm is, is doing that. It is, as you said this morning, the ever, expand, ever expanding circle moved by the Holy Spirit. So this really becomes, this building is a building. And yes, we do have now bathrooms that we can get out of the, the bugs and, and, and worship, uh, which is wonderful. But it really is this, becomes this big oak tree on the land that we have down there uh, that will help us realize this vision we have. So um, looking at the building itself, some of the design pictures we've got up here, you'll notice the first thing is it's not, does not look like a tra traditional church. And that's exactly what, we were trying to do not to not look like a church, but we felt like we really needed something different that caught people's eyes, that functioned as a multi-function uh, type of building. You know, think of if you've ever been out to Ann Springs Close Greenway, right? They've got some great buildings out there, a, a dairy barn, an old dairy barn that they have events in and some other buildings. And it's kind of like that, that type of feel, um, but no stained glass, no bricks but lots of, lots of space to, to inside and out. Uh, lots of, think of, think of wood beams, you know, high ceilings. I think we're still doing wood. Bobby, has the price gone up since Thursday? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, okay. But think, think of that type of, uh, of atmosphere where we've got place to worship. We've got uh, uh, space to, to do things after worship and to hold events in this, in this building. Um, I think the, the actual square footage we'll have, well, first off, we'll, we'll be able to accommodate roughly about 300 people uh, for a worship, worship space, and even more than that for, for functions. But about 5,000 square feet for program space. I think I got that right, right? And roughly about 10,000 square feet under roof that we can use inside and out. So it's really a great space. And I think from Ray Road, right, as people are coming through, um, they will see this and it will pull them in. It's, it's a space for all of us at Christ Lutheran to come use and worship him. Um, we'll be on the land, I think, starting June 13th, right, in terms of worshiping outside. So please come down and see the land. You can see this. Uh, but hopefully this gives you some idea of what this, what this space looks like. And this is a you know, conceptual drawing, so it will change a little bit. But basically, this is the feel that we're going to have inside and out. Anything else to add? Nothing, nothing to add other than uh, we're really excited about the space being a really multi-use space and being able to do a lot of things in that space. So it won't just be for church on Sundays. We wanted to create a space that we could do all kinds of things uh, throughout the week and interact with people in a, in a sustainable community uh, model. So it's very exciting. Maybe there's questions about the, uh, the building at this time. I don't know. Up. Have we got any questions about the, the actual space and the building itself? Yeah. 
there's uh there he he said, is it a metal building yeah is it a metal building uh it won't be like a metal prefab building yeah we we looked into that and it wasn't something that the town of weddington was going to accept uh for something that we could do so we had to sort of branch out a little bit from that but we'll do as much of that fabricated metal as we can keep the cost down yeah but not a full box that they ship to us yeah yeah the town of weddington matter of fact they were uh, that was one thing they asked for was it didn't look too much like a pre-engineered type of building that, that it had more of a uh, non-prefab look. Yeah. That too. <clears throat> so we're working with Edifice is our con contractor. They, of course, built this building and they built the, uh, the ministry center as well. And when we talked about that prefab steel building, they said, yes, you can probably save some costs there. But but think of a building like that, almost like a pole barn. Think about that for like, you know, two or three or four years. Um, as we got into this process, we realized that this building that we're talking about <clears throat> is much longer. I mean, this is like five, 10, 15 years, maybe more. So we want something much more substantial than a prefab steel building. Are they projected costs out? What's that? That's next. All right. Okay, Bobby, we're gonna have Bobby. Bobby, this could probably be a good time. Any other questions about the building itself before we switch to some of the we have numbers? One yeah. Okay. Might have to read that. Oh. Okay. Can you um? Can you un ask your question on Zoom? Or type that. Did they type it in? Did they type their question in? Can, can you can you put it up there? Oh. Just bring your laptop. So is three hundred the question um, that was asked was is three hundred people size of the in that they can hold big enough? I'll let them pass your map. No. <laughs> Uh, no, the answer is absolutely not. You know, if we think about what the Holy Spirit is doing uh, and we watch what God has continually done with Christ South, sure, it's not big enough, but it's a great place to start. And we are also working on engineering the building in such a way that we have indoor outdoor space. If you guys have that picture to show where those garage doors can come up and we can kind of spill out onto the patio, it's possible that we could even expand the building if we need to down the road, you know, and actually go out underneath that roof and move the walls out. So we're, we're setting it up for that. That possibility while not making a giant cave if we only had 150 people out of the gate right it gives us a chance to feel good and then as we continue to grow we'll have the opportunity to maybe move those walls uh, out so no absolutely not let's make it for 700 <laughs> great the the question You're not. Can you hear me now? The question here was uh, just a little bit about the town of Weddington's interaction and interest. Uh, the Mayor Callis and I have been talking for years uh, about putting something like this together because she has great interest in utilizing this land. In Weddington, there is no real big open space. And so we went to them, I mean, really years ago, like four years ago, when we were first talking about where to ultimately be and said, what do you want? And how would that ultimately look like for you guys? And they were super excited about doing food truck nights out on the lawn and utilizing that space we haven't had the ability to to do that yet with our facilities and this will give us the chance to do that rayview elementary has already reached out to us amy are you here rayview elementary a theater charlotte um 
What's other, uh, and then the town of Weddington, we have a number of organizations that have already reached out wanting to use the land and partner with us. So it's really, really good opportunity for us. Okay. Other questions? All right, with that, I'll turn it over to Bobby. Um, he's gonna talk a little bit about the financials. Absolutely, <laughs> Amy. I mean, to have the job to be able to introduce the design of the building, I think Lane got the good part of the job. Uh, mine happens to be numbers. Um, and that was, opera, um, I think, exciting that one of the first questions was, what's it going to cost us? Before I say that, though, real quickly, um, I've been fortunate to be a part of the process down at Christ South, uh, our church at Christ South. Um, in 2017, when I was elected to council, was when we went out and decided we needed to buy some land down there. And I was very fortunate to be involved in that vote of, yes, we do need land down there. And one day, one day, we'll be able to build something out there. Um, earlier in December, I was asked to be on a committee to talk about uh, vetting and uh, talking with uh, general contractors to get an idea as who would build it. And of course, as Scott said, Edifice was selected, uh, an excellent construction company. Um, then came, well, what's it gonna cost us? And we kept saying one day, one day, well, it's today. It is middle of 2021. Here we are talking about a building uh, that will now be visible and be used uh, by Christ Lutheran uh, to be seen in other areas besides here at Providence. So let's get to the numbers. There are really three buckets of money that we're talking about in the build of this uh, site here. The first bucket is uh, the building. This is the, uh, the estimated cost to build that building. Again, it's that 5,000 square foot structure with a 10,000 linear feet of, of uh, roof line. Um, which lets you be inside the building and outside and allows for expansion later on. So uh, what, what a super design that was made on this building. So that's bucket number one. Bucket number two includes a couple of things. One is site work. You can't take a building and just plop it down in the middle of a, a piece of property and expect to open the doors. There is a lot of prep work that's involved in, uh, in, in that. Uh, whether it's building of roads, clearing trees, putting in sewer lines, all of those things. Site work is one of them. Utilities is the next to run those utilities to the site. And then the last one is landscaping uh, to make that site look presentable. So that's the second bucket of money that's used in this project. The third bucket um, happens to be the soft costs. The soft costs, the tables, the chairs, everything that's involved in being able to use that building. It's a lovely building, but unless you have some things inside, you can't use that building. So the soft costs are involved uh, to make up the cost. The last part of it, and probably the most important, and if you were all here for the master's plan, you remember that for every million dollars of money that was raised for this building where we are today, we said, we want to look outside our walls. We, we need to have some outreach um, as part of it. Uh, we are blessed to have money that comes in to build our structure, but we need to be a blessing to others. And so we said for every million dollars of money that's raised for the project, $50,000 of that would be used to go outside of our walls, to be used for people in need. Um, and that's what we want to do also with this project. So with that extra money involved, the grand total is $3 million, with 150,000 of it being used for outreach in the community. The really, really, really exciting part is that a large gift was given and the sale of the one acre piece of property across the street has already raised $1 million. So we are a million dollars ahead at this point which makes it fantastic because we get $50,000 that we are able now to be able to give to the community. So 25,000 of that will go to Lutheran World Relief down in Central America. And the other 25,000 will be used with our garden ministry, being able to move that garden ministry to Christ South and to Christ Concord 
to help with uh, growing of food, and, and you've all heard it, this wonderful distribution of fresh food to our community as a whole. So it just keeps on giving from that. So that's the end of my spiel. $3 million will be the total amount with a million already raised at this point. Are there questions that you would like to have on this? I figured. Yes. Okay. So the, the question was, do we have a diagram on the master plan that shows what we're actually going to build for the $3 million? Like the site, site plan? Site plan? It's, we've got an architect plan. No, not a slide of it. We don't have a slide. Yeah, we don't have a slide of that, but we do have the master plan. We've got one right here, Lane's in his hand, that you can pass back over to Eddie. <laughs> Um, that's the whole site work that shows where the building is going to be on the land itself. So we do have that. Yeah. Do yes. have a contingency amount for that $3 million? The question was, do we have a contingency amount for that $3 million? So if there are increases, you're saying, uh, yes, you know, and we've already seen some of that <clears throat> as we speak. Um, if any of you are aware of what's going on in our community with construction, uh, we've already had a large sizable increase in the wood that will be used for this project. I think it increased something like $160,000 in the cost of the wood. Now, that ebbs and flows, and uh, we have been in conversation with the general contractor, and they are uh, going to be beating down their subcontractors uh, to make sure that the costs uh, that are used for this building are in line. But $3 million, as far as I know at this point, that's pretty much our demarcation line of what we're planning on spending. Yes. So the question is, when Pastor Matt <clears throat> mentioned that the elementary school that sits behind the property, as well as the town of Weddington, would be utilizing the land for activities or events, is that a potential income uh, stream? I'll let Pastor Matt speak to that. Yeah, Gretchen, that's a great question. question. Um, it's possible, um, you know, with organizations like that that aren't, um, you know, massive money makers. Uh, you know, the town of Weddington, although the 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 area is really flush with revenue, um, the town of Wedding doesn't have. You know, it's not like they're sitting on millions of dollars that they're going to pay us for that. Um, but we've got a really great uh, a movement in in paying attention to how that might ultimately come together. Um, Amy Topping, Amy, can you just stand up in the back and wave so we want to see who you are? Amy is as our uh, executive minister at Christ South, and she's also kind of stepping into that role of looking at how we utilize the land. Uh, we call it the old dairy farm. You've probably heard that before. And there's a lot of folks that want to interact with that. So Amy will really be pivotal in helping us to understand how those things might look uh, ultimately in terms of those partnerships. Certainly, certainly is a goal. We'd love to figure those out. Other questions? The question is, did we include the paved parking areas within the project and yes so uh there it's it's kind of it's gravel so i guess it's it's, it's uh it's a little bit half and half like to preserve that sort of farm like feel uh it'll have a gravel drive in but then there are required ada spaces and walkways that'll all be uh paved for uh folks that need paved spaces So the question is, did we ever get a number for actually asphalting the entire driveway? We decided not to pursue that uh, based on look and feel. It was certainly gonna be more what we heard from our, uh, our builders. It was gonna be significantly more. Um, and so we thought, well, it doesn't fit with our aesthetic and it doesn't make sense for us financially. So pursuing, pursuing gravel. Any questions on Zoom? No. Pastor. Uh, how about at Concord? Any questions from Concord? Any other questions? And I apologize that I can't see your hand. That's a bright light. <laughs> 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 
Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's a great question. So the question is, um, since we don't have a site plan, we're trying to pull that. Uh, we do have it. We sent it to him. Okay, great. He's pulling it up right now. But if you remember, the question was, if we, we're trying to pull up the site plan and how is the new barn, the worship center, going to interact with the land that's already existing? Um, and he's pulling it up right now, but if we can also use the um, drone cup viewage as we need to. Uh, I, I could talk about that just a little bit. You know, our goal is to utilize as many of the buildings that are currently up. We have three houses and three buildings. Um, the, the site plan that you're looking at is not a final site plan, right? We're, we're actually looking at shifting a couple of things this week to really try to do two things. One, preserve as much of the building and storage, uh, because storage is always an issue. For those of you that have worked in a church, you know, say amen. <laughs> so we want to make sure we have that. And then the second thing is to preserve as many of the trees uh, as we can in the area. So um, I don't know if you guys got that. Thomas, uh, uh, it looks like it's coming in a couple of seconds. So uh, just hang tight. We'll be able to see kind of what the site plan uh, looks like. While that's happening, uh, Nancy had a question or a comment. Corner. <laughs> Great question. So the question is, um, you probably saw from the drone footage that there was some construction already happening adjacent to the property. Um, that is actually the town of Weddington's new firehouse. So one of the things that wasn't mentioned when we went through the financials, which was, again, I, I call it God's plan, they are putting that in and they're putting sewage lines in. And uh, we get to connect to those sewage lines and save a couple hundred thousand dollars probably. So um, timing couldn't have been better. <laughs> so, great question. The question was, uh, have we had any goals set uh, specifically to Christ South about what their plan is to give towards it? Um, Scott, do you want to talk a little bit about, you're the, you've been kind of working with that, your logistics team. Um, the, Here's the site plan here. Let me think. You do this first. One of the, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, all right. So we'll go back to site plan for a minute, and then uh, we'll come back to your question, Pastor Carl. So if you guys look right here, um, you'll be able to see what's all that black. Uh, I think that's just the way it's kind of coming across, but that's all gravel and then the parking lots. You can see the proposed building kind of in the uh, bracket uh, as it opens up into, uh, into that field. And, uh, and this, this sort of winding uh, loop through the woods uh, is, our, uh, is our path through the woods. Um, we actually had Cecilia uh, do, do her Eagle Scout project and put in two of the first gazebos uh, right as you enter into the woods, kind of at the top of that, so that you see the, little, the, sort of the tree outline is. She put a couple of those in already, and we'll be able to continue that throughout the woods for people to enjoy the, uh, the walking trails. And I'm at, Matt, I would add, too, that this is a working draft. Um, it is a working so draft. It may not look exactly the same as we understand what trees we want to sell, you know, save. Uh, that is the goal, to save as much green as we can. Um, so the road might go a little differently than you see today. Yep, absolutely. Want to talk a little bit about finances? Oh, question. Sorry. Yeah. Just a little bit help with orientation. Sure. Site plan back up, please. So the yes. So that will stay. Uh, let me let me walk through that whole thing for those that are online. So Ray Road is on your left side. And Reed Dairy Road is kind of on the bottom. And the question was, which of the houses and buildings would be destroyed? Our goal is to keep all of them in place. For example, house one, which you see right up by Ray Road, and then house three, which is sort of in that little L of the parking lots, uh, that'll house Thrive Day School and Thrive Home on our South Campus. Fun fact, they will also be on the Providence Campus and the Concord Campus uh, this upcoming uh, fall, which is incredible, going from about 
about 20 students to over 70. It's just absolutely amazing what God is doing with Thrive. That middle house right there is currently occupied by our security team, the Porter family, and uh, it will ultimately be, uh, be offices for the church as we go forward. Just north or of, on that drawing north of the deck barn, or excuse me, the, the house one is what we call the deck barn. That's going to serve as our sort of temporary outdoor worship hub. If you go a little bit this direction, you see three trees kind of coming back off of house two. There's a maintenance shed in there, and Joe Simpkins, who might be related to me, is our acting head of maintenance uh, for, the, for the land. So that's his shop where all of those things happen to keep everything in working order. Right now, Gwen, building three is the only building that's removed on this on this site plan. And we're gonna to try to work this week to see if we can figure out ways to shift so that we can even keep that just because we need the storage uh, so desperately. And we're trying to keep the entire footprint cost down. Is that helpful online catch all of that? The garden, oh, great, thank you. The garden ministry. So for those of you that may not have noticed when you drove in today, where there were about 30 of us yesterday that worked to move the garden to the south land. Um, it's going to be right adjacent to Ray Road beside House One. Um, very excited about that. We've already, I believe, well, keep me honest, if you're here, 5,700 pounds of fresh produce has been donated. Um, and very excited to see what that ministry continues um, to thrive, for lack of better words. Just kind of a catch up to Pastor Carl's question as, as, as Scott comes up is um, uh, this, the first special sort of seed gift came from a South family to help us get get rolling, which is an amazing thing to have happen. Uh, but we're one church. So, so thinking about it and sort of putting people into particular buckets uh, could be a difficult thing for us to do. And, I, and just sort of as a reminder, when we talk about this, we talk about our church our land, our South Campus. We've, we've always been about being one congregation going forward together. Um, yeah. Do you want to add anything to that? Yeah. <clears throat> just, uh, just to um, reiterate that, that we've really tried hard not to, um, to figure out exactly if every campus is paying their fair share at this point, so to speak, because we know that a mission start like Christ South and we know that a turnaround that we're doing at Christ Concord, we know that <clears throat> those usually take upwards to five years to be able to even um, be self-sustaining. And with COVID hit right in the middle of it, it makes it even more difficult. But I think your, your point here, even before we've done any kind of serious fundraising, we already received one gift from a family that... Um, over three hundred thousand dollars towards that, and um, and I so I think the generosity is already there. Repeat the question, Pastor. Yeah. So Jeff was asking about um, rotation of pastors to the different sites. Um, so our model that we have for multi-campuses is a little bit different from a lot of other churches. And a lot of churches have what's, what we're calling like the franchise model, in which all the different campuses look and taste and smell the same, like in Elevation or Forest Hill, where You've got one preacher who's being beamed in all over the place. That's, that's not our model. Nor is our model kind of a loose confeder confederation of churches that are independent, but somehow connected through mission or, or even through a church council. Ours is not that either. So we've got primary pastors on these campuses. So Matt's the primary preacher and Tenny is the primary preacher, and I'm the primary preacher here. So I'll typically, I'll typically preach three Sundays here a month. And the Sunday I'm not preaching here, and I'm not on vacation, <laughs> uh, I'll be over at South or I'll be over at Concord. So typically, I like, to get a, I like to get to South or Concord every six to eight weeks. Every six to eight weeks. Probably less for the two of them coming here because I've got two other pastors who'd like to preach here as well. <laughs> and, um, 
and they're really kind of that that campus pastor. So when I go to preach at South or at Concord, you know, I'm working directly with um, with Matt or with Tenny to be able to integrate within that within that service. Drew does go down there. Melody goes down there about once a month. It would be nice to have Matt up here. Yeah. I would encourage too. I mean, yeah. <laughs> We have a lot of families, I think, too, that go in between the campuses. I know our, our family does. Our kids love Blast when it was there, and so they beg to go down. But yet we, you know, worship here majority of our time, and I know Lane, similar situation. So we have a lot of cross-pollination of families as well, which is great. I know we have a question on Zoom, or from Concord. Okay, so to repeat the question back, the question is, since the facility will be a multi-purpose facility used for both um, church activities and community activities, will there be a fee for those community activities? And I'll uh, the that. answer to that is it really depends on the the group that's using it, um, you know, uh, for, uh, for, for folks that want to use it that can't, you know, afford, we're always interested in having those partnerships. That's really a strategy that, uh, that will work out over a period of time to sort of figure out what that ultimately, uh, what that looks like at the tune of $50,000 per hour. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> and will it mimic the similar governance we have here, I guess, with yes. this campus? I was going to say that here, so. Amy, that um, at Providence right now, we do have a fee structure for those people who are on the outside going to use our facilities. And as Matt suggested, you know, if it is a group that, um, you know, is a nonprofit, we've got a relationship with them, you know, if the Boy Scouts wanted to have you know, maybe they're Eagle Scout and they've been meeting here, we probably wouldn't be charging that. But if outside groups, we're particularly looking at weddings as being a potential good source there over at Christ South. Other questions? Anything? Uh, I think uh, you said uh, yes, like the, uh, the right oh. oh, good segue. Great question. Great segue. <laughs> Out of the park. Was that a I'll take that one. <laughs> Did you know? Do you have an agenda? It was a fat pitch. So the question right. is, just repeat, the question's on timeline. So Pastor Scott's going to go through the whole That's timeline. next on the agenda, Ed. So the timeline, take a look at the uh, chart here. You know, uh, April, we had the conceptual drawings that we're sharing with you here today. Uh, May, we're right there at the congregational vote. Assuming this goes well. Uh, Matt and I are going to have a whole lot of lunches coming up with people to talk about, you know, their, their gift towards this. There, there's first a um, kind of a silent phase where we'll have some individual lead gifts, and then there'll be more the public phase in which we'll ask everybody to chip in. But, but that June and July especially, we'll be having a lot of one-on-ones to be able to do a lion's share. All right, so after that, sometime in August, we'll get a really good idea about how much money will be committed. And by the way, we're going to give people like a year to, um, to, to, to fulfill their commitment, about a year. So, um, so by August, we'll have a really good idea about what that number is. And by the way, we may not hit that number in August because we've got like four different touch points in which we're going to return to people and ask for a commitment in June. In June and July, when we have those conversations, we'll ask people for the commitment. We're going to have a groundbreaking, it says right there in October. We have a groundbreaking in October. We're going to go down to the site we're going to have um, a, a celebration, a dedication, and it's going to be a time, again, for people to be able to commit towards this project. Year end. There'll be a year end push again as people are thinking about their year end gifts to the church. We always see a swell in those year end gifts, and we'd like to see if some can be directed towards the capital campaign. And then the fourth one you see at the end there, opening worship. We're anticipating Easter of 2022. 
And when we have that opening worship, that'll be the fourth touch point for, uh, for people to once again commit to this project. So we don't hit the whole $2 million. We already have a million, remember. We don't hit the whole $2 million in August. Um, uh, depending what that delta is, we've got three more touch points to get there. Now, question here, when we work with Edifice, they always give this uh, maximum guaranteed price. Maximum guaranteed price. And so we met with them this past week and we said, well, how long are bids good for these days? If you're in the construction business, you should be snickering right now. Because it was when we built this and we built the, the worship center, the bids were good for 30, 60, 90 days, maybe 60 days. Um, the builder is now saying they're good that day. It's really, it's going to be really difficult for Edifice to give us that guaranteed maximum price. Now they're still going to do it. They're still going to do it. So the anticipation timeline, the anticipation is that um, August will have a pretty good idea about the income. They will put it out in the street in September, get the hard, hard bids and see if we have to do any value engineering, any tweaks to be able to get it at that, that cost point so that we can break ground in October. Questions about the timeline? Do we have any other financing lined up in case we don't hit the 3 million? You know, um, my... It's my hope that, um, that we can pay this without any long-term debt. Now we've already have a million dollars in the bank and Edifice has given us that, um, uh, what's that called? The phasing or when the money's due or what it's, right. yeah. what's that word? Wave pricing, yeah. Those are called? Wave pricing? Is that what the timeline called? for the costs, what? Cash flow. Maybe the cash yes. flow, that, but um, and it looks like we won't have to take out a construction loan because we've got so much in the bank already. Now here it is. Worst case scenario, Terry, if we don't hit that three million dollar mark, um, you know our current bank BB and T, um, you know they they have said that we've got a whole lot of credit line left. We've got a four million dollar debt right now with a 3.2 or $3.3 .3 million budget. It's roughly $14,000 a month. And, and we can pay that right now. That's not, that's not really hurting us. We're managing that just for good stewards. I'd like to pay for it in cash. You know, if we have to, if we have to take out, let me grab a number, half a million dollars to bridge that, we can't do it unless there's a congregational meeting. So at the point there of that September, October, and we decide there's that delta of $500,000, and we can't shave anything more of the project, we would have to come back to us here and say, can we take out a half million dollar long-term debt? But that would be your decision, not council's or mine. Other questions? Yes. So Mark, Marco asked the question about what about the pastor? We've got a vision here for the project, the land, the prices. What about, um, what about the pastor? 
Um, I, would, I would say this, and certainly if you want to include anything at the end here, I would say this. It is, our, it is our hope, it is our call. I've had several conversations with Matt about this. I certainly didn't want to get into this project and have him being having wandering eyes looking at something else. I had to really sit down and, and have a heart to heart about, let me know about, you know, nothing's guaranteed, but let me know about your commitment level. And, um, and he has assured me at, at several occasions that um, his call is to Christ Lutheran, specifically leading Christ South. Now, having said that, any church, any church that is pivoting on an individual is pivoting on the wrong base. If we go forward with this, Matt could leave, I could leave, and the vision would still stand. Now, might it be delayed a little bit? Yeah, could. But no vision that we put together ought to be pivoting on a single pastor. Yeah, we have a question online from Concord. So the question was, are there any grants available to cover the cost of the building? Not that I'm aware of. You got some? That's, that's the answer. It's, um, there may be some little pockets and pieces, but um, we didn't find any pre-COVID uh, that, 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 that really filled that bucket. I mean, Laura can explain with Thrive, you know, just us trying to figure out grants for Thrive. They're very much uh, not building, uh, not staff, uh, but program or mission-based grants. So, so typically that's where those come from. Now, the nice thing is the more of those we do, that can offset and open up funds in some other areas. And so we'll certainly be um, looking for any opportunities that we can. I would, I would add to that, you know, the hope is in a couple of years, I don't know, maybe three to five years, we would like to build um, a school for Thrive. And when we do that, there'll be much more, uh, more available grants to do something like that, especially for children of greater need than it would be for building a church. Right. What is the life expectancy of this building? Yeah. So the life expectancy of this building, um, boy, this, we believe, and Matt and I have certainly spoken about this, that this is going to meet our needs for, at a minimum, we've been talking 15 years. You know, we talk about it can seat 300. You can certainly go to two services. You can go to three services. We've got three services here at Christ Providence. So we're not locked into one service, and then we can expand that out. But the building construction itself, that's why we went from that pole barn kind of temporary steel um, prefab to this real um, longer term construction. That's what Edifice pointed us towards the whole time. Other questions? Okay, seeing no questions, I am going to move us to our motion. So on behalf of the church council, I bring this motion to you. We, the members of Christ Lutheran Church, move to accept our Southland building project as presented today with a maximum expenditure of $3 million. Do I have a second? Thank you. Any discussion? Any questions before we vote? Everybody's ready for lunch. <laughs> Anything online, Alexis? Thank you. It's coming in. We do have one question coming.
Okay. Yeah, if you want to ask your question from Christ Concord. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Tenney. I love modern technology. <laughs> Any other discussion before we vote? Yes. Please. Um, why don't you come up to a mic? We don't have a handheld, do we? There's one right here on the music stand. Thank you, Marco. Mm -hmm. um, one more. There it is. is it on? Oh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for being here. Um, myself, I'm speaking in behalf of uh, Christ South and uh, our small group and also my family as well. I, I want to share that um, before, before COVID, um, I was always a person that studied theology and, and always understood that the building, the brick and mortar is not the church. But during this time of, of, of loudness and doubt and even darkness throughout our country and world, uh, I came to understand that the building is important. And I'm saying this deeply because I have friends that are members of the church and, and members, even family members that have left because it was important to them. I just didn't understand it because I kept on saying the church is us, people, numbers, community coming together. But as I once heard it before, I, I always realized, yes, it, it is important to many. Um, and, and it means a lot for us, for you all to be here and being willing even to vote or even consider thinking about it, even open your hearts and to expand it beyond these brick walls. And I, stay, and I state this because the one analogy, as any other pastor <laughs> will come, it, it, it's an airport. It's an, I want you guys to think about a hub. This is not the final destination. Every pastor knows that. You come here and then everybody gets guided to a certain location to spread God's word. And during this COVID uh, phase, I got to see that. I got to understand that that people do need a hub. We do need a hub so that we can get main, maintain or, or be refueled and be directed. And that's what Pastor Matt, that's what Pastor Scott, that's what Christ Lipton does for us as Christ South. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. I, it's dangerous when you give a pastor a mic. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to be sensitive here. But I just want you guys to use that analogy and realize that even a pastor that studied the textbook, it, I had to experience the whole pandemic to understand family members leaving the church, cry out because of just the temporary uh, hub that we had at the school. And then now the property where we're, you know, we're dealing with the bugs and the, and, and the, and the ants, oh, fire ants, they, they're horrible by the way. <laughs> but I just wanna share that with you guys because it, it does mean a lot. And I've been praying about it. And I wanted to share that because it, it, it humbled me to understand that I was wrong. And yes, we are, the church is made by us, but that hub is still important because we need to be maintained. We need to rest. We need to be refueled. We need, we need to be directed by the Holy Spirit. So I just want to share that. And, I, and everything that you guys have done here by praying and being patient and seeing this vision and mission and just listening, it, listening it in your language and listening in our language, Christ South. It just means the world to me and to my family and to all the other members of Christ South. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion before we take the official vote? All right. That being said, I will ask for a vote. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. Oh, aye. time out. Sorry. I've got to repeat the We have a question. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I forgot to say that. Um, 
We're going to do that one more time. Sorry, that was just a warm up of our voices. <laughs> so if you're on Zoom, my apologies. Um, if you'll just raise your hand, you should see that down in the bottom right hand corner of Zoom. If you click on it, raise your hand and that will be your voice vote on Zoom for us. Thank you, Alexa, so we can see. All right, one more time. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. All opposed? How are you looking online? All right, motion passes. Thank you all, have a wonderful Sunday. We are adjourned, sorry. <laughs>